What are you going to do with your freedom? The poignant question from playwright Pearl N. to Springer's moving play, Freedom Morning Come, guided the theme of the early morning proclamation at the start of the Emancipation Day celebrations on Tuesday. Cameraman Andy Wharton captured the images and reporter Kimberly D'Souza brings us more in this report. I do, I do proclaim that from August 1st, 1834, the institution of slavery is to be utterly and forever abolished and declared unlawful throughout the British colonies. Decades later, in 1985, Trinidad and Tobago became the first independent country to declare Emancipation Day a national holiday to commemorate the abolition of slavery. Playwright Pearl Aintu Springer's play, Freedom Morning Come, formed part of the early morning celebrations at the steps where the real proclamation was read years ago. People gathered at the Treasury Building to participate in the celebrations, which included cultural performances and speeches by notable figures within the Emancipation Movement. Daughter of Pearl Aintu Springer and founder of IDKEDA, Dara Healy, said it is time African people know where they came from so they can know who they are as a people. We have a proud, proud history and in the work that we do in communities and with young people, that is sorely lacking. That is sorely lacking. You still have boys, young boys from Love Until who make fun of African words and, you know, young, young black girls who um, are very insecure about their hair and their skin. Prime Minister Dr. Keith Rowley said the day was significant to our citizens, many of whom were witnessing the presence, stature and majesty of African royalty in our midst for the first time. From today, the word there which implies something foreign, other, or of distant ownership will be changed and we will begin to share and embrace every aspect of both our lives as ours. Meaning that on both sides of the Atlantic, African people will see the oneness that we carry within us. Then, we will be separated only by the narrowing of the Atlantic Ocean. His Royal Majesty Otumfuo Osei Tutu II, the Asenteheni, and members of his retinue were guests at the celebration. Minister of Tourism, Culture and the Arts, Randall Mitchell, thanked his ancestors who fought for freedom and dignity. It is a day of remembrance and reflection a day that holds deep significance in shaping the tapestry of our nation. So today, I too am pleased to welcome His Royal Majesty, who is present with us to share in our celebration of freedom and growth as a people. The celebrations were attended by other government ministers, including Minister of Foreign and CARICOM Affairs, Dr. Amory Brown, and Minister of Energy and Energy Industries, Stuart Young. Kimberly D'Souza, TDT News. And on Emancipation Day, Tobagonians come out in their splendor and glory to participate in the festivities. TTT News took to the streets during the annual Emancipation Procession to discover what Emancipation Day means to those gathered. To hold good strength and people to come together and most of all, peace on the land. Well, it's something I like. You know, black people have to really lift themselves and show the discipline. But besides that, we have to show more support, man. More support to the, 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 the culture. Give thanks for this day, Emancipation Day, where we, this, we appease the spirits of our ancestors, who, when they came over here, always had the desire to return home and wasn't given the chance and their thoughts and their anguish was so deep in their belly that we are their thoughts manifested. We are our ancestor thoughts manifested to show the world we want to go home. In Tobago, 20 of Tobago's cultural stalwarts were recognized by the Tobago House of Assembly during Tuesday's Emancipation Day celebrations. 
The event, which culminated the 2023 Heritage Festival, saw the usual parade through the streets of Crown Point and a cultural show at the Shaw Park facility. Secretary for Tourism Tasha Grace Burris congratulated Assistant Secretary Megan Morrison, who executed the Heritage Festival in the Department of Culture. She added it was necessary to honor those who contributed to Tobago's heritage. It's also about recognizing how far we have come and how far we still have to go. I want to send special congratulations to all of the persons who we'll be honoring today. I think all of the awardees are very well-deserved persons who have worked hard in their communities over the years. Some of them have never been honored by a THA before, and I think it would be remiss of us if we did not take the opportunity while they were alive to be able to show them that we appreciate them. Chief Secretary Fali Augustine told the crowd it should be more than just an Emancipation Day celebration. He urged Tobagonians to observe activities in the wider world relating to the African community. And you ought to be prepared to support those efforts of the brothers and sisters in Africa, and in particular in West Africa, as they fight against neo-colonialism. And so, uh, today, I want to thank you for coming out in your hundreds to, to celebrate today, but the celebration must go beyond what we do now and ensure that we give support for each other within the African diaspora. President Christine Kangalu is encouraging citizens to use the opportunity of the visit by the Asante Hene, the king of the Asante peoples, to reconnect deeply and meaningfully with the courage and resilience of our African forebears and of all who have persevered in the fight for freedom. In her emancipation message to the nation, President Kangalu says we are immensely thankful for the example of courage and resilience of our African forebears. She says surviving slavery called upon them to summon their last ounce of human and spiritual strength. The president says when today we face the unspeakable horrors of child abuse and human trafficking, when today we confront the misery and the torment of the sexual exploitation of vulnerable children, when today we face all of the horrors of the modern world, let us remember that there was once a time so dark and a world so full of greed and hate that all also seemed lost then too. She says, just as the courage and resilience of our African forebears allowed us to survive this world's darkest moments, let us too draw from the wells of courage and resilience that reside deep within all of us and triumph over our own struggles and adversities just as they did.